Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera, and this is Jack, he's chillin'. Today, we are going to be learning how to fix a creaky Shimano 12-speed hub. Look at this marshmallow of a feline. For this task, you will need a chain whip to remove your cassette, cassette removal tool, pliers, snap ring pliers, or a pokey tool, or a small screwdriver. You will understand when we get to this point of the video. Shimano premium grease, and a rag. This video has been highly requested, especially over on our vlogging channel because Mackie's rear wheel creaked horribly for about two months straight. We didn't actually know what the problem was until we talked to the Shimano mechanics when we were at nationals and they taught us how to fix this problem. We've had a lot of requests on this channel for more general how to fix creaky bike parts videos and we've kind of stayed away from that because the reality is there are a million and 10 reasons your bike might be creaking. Different components creak in different places, different linkage setups or different suspension platforms creak in different ways. It's kind of hard to put all that into one video. So today we are just going to show you one particularly creaky hub. If you have a Shimano 12 speed hub, you may have run into this problem already. So this video will be very helpful for you. If you don't have that hub, this might be helpful to kind of show you what to look for if your bike is making a lot of creaks. Huge shout out to Jacob at Shimano for helping us figure out how to do this. So I haven't actually done this yet. Mackie fixed his bikes at nationals and he's gonna walk me through fixing my bike, which has also now started creaking. Okay, so the first thing we are gonna do is remove the rear wheel. That's sort of obvious, but I'm gonna turn the clutch off. And maybe shift into the hardest gear to make life easier. Eh. I like to live on the wild side, but you're right, it does make life easier. There we go. Someone stronger than me apparently put on my wheel. Kind of a good idea to like put on your own wheels on your bike. I've run into this before when Mackie tightens my wheels down that I like have a really hard time. We've talked about this before on this channel, but people really make a mess out of removing their rear wheel. We got a comment recently from some guy who claims that he has to take his derailleur off every time to take off his 29 inch wheel. That was not my best, but it worked. <laughs> The key is pushing your derailleur down and pulling it back like that. Don't worry, you won't hurt it. All right, so now we're gonna take out the cassette. Cassette, cassette, cassette. I would say this is also like just on its own, one of those tasks that is not that easy. Okay, lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. I wanna be pushing down, which is why I need this guy. So a chain whip is just a, a widget that holds your cassette with a little chainy doohickey. So this one clamps so you can do it way lower down. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you just, oh, you just squeeze it. I think I need two hands. That was my problem. Easy as pie. Is pie easy? Why do we say that? Because actually making pie is really hard. Maybe they mean eating it. Easy as eating pie. Focus, Sid, or you're gonna drop this cassette in a million pieces, which I would really like to avoid. I generally try to pull the cassette out as even as possible on the off chance that it will all go back together in one piece. Very off chance. <laughs> yeah, well, you can always try. All right, so this is the part that I have not done yet. So what comes next? The goal is to remove this free hub body. And the first thing you're gonna do is pull this off, which uh, Jacob used a um, a cone wrench because it has the little marks there and you can slide a okay. cone wrench on and pop it off. We don't have a cone wrench. That's what the pliers are for. So just grab solidly on the side and pull straight up and it will come off. You wanna assure people that that's not hurting anything to hit yeah. with pliers. Yeah, uh, yeah you wanna be careful not to like grab and release or like rub it. Yeah, you don't want to like scratch straight anything. Up, Just pull straight up firmly. The next step is you have to remove this outer ring and that's where the lock mm. ring part comes in. And lock. you can see like there's two spots there that you basically need to squeeze those oh, two metal things together. Okay. What I've always done is just used 
the pokey tool okay. and like one side of these pliers. Okay. And then you want to like, as you squeeze them together, you want to lift up. Oh man. Yes, it's a I pain. This is the hardest what's part. happening here, why this would be hard. Okay, so we got one side. I just have to get this guy. It seems too big. Okay. There you go. Oh, Excellent. That was well done. How did you say that Jacob did this? He had a pair of snap ring pliers, but his snap ring pliers, the holes were too, or the, the clamps were too big, like the end mm, okay. of the pliers were too big. And so he actually ground his down so they fit. I did not feel like I was anywhere close to hurting anything. It's literally just a lock. Like all it's doing is locking it into place. So it's not like if you beat up a, beat it up a little bit, it's not a big deal. So now you're just gonna lift the entire thing straight up carefully. Uh, do it without the rag, just so people can see. I don't wanna get greasy. There you go. Oopsies. So th that all comes with it. Okay. All right, this is your free hub body, in yes, case so you're let's... ever curious what that looked like. This is the Shimano 12 speed silence hub. It's really cool because when you, like when the wheel gets moving quickly, it goes silent. I will say, aside from the creaking, we've really, really liked these hubs. Yes. Because I'm not about the like extremely noisy hub thing. So like try pulling thing. it apart and now twist. You see how it locks? Yeah. Ooh, okay. So that's how it works basically. As it spins forward, there are springs underneath it right there and they compress together and then that's what makes it spin freely. And then when you pedal forward, the springs expand and then it locks into place. Why do you want it to lock into place? Everybody? Well, so that when you pedal, your cassette actually moves your wheel. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, yeah. right, sure. Forward, Yeah. backward. And then when it spins, it spins silently. Cool. So go ahead and pull that seal that's on the top off. Oh, this guy. See underneath it, there's a little plastic mm -hmm. tooth yep. thingy. Pull that off also. Okay. So that is where there should be grease. Wow, so all that creaking is coming from this little plastic thing on this metal thing. I think it's more the intersection of that with the teeth in the hub, but apparently when they first made these wheels, they said, don't grease them, and so they didn't grease them. And then no, they started creaking. And then they started saying, do grease them, and now once you grease them, they last for a long time without right. needing to re-grease so them. So probably if you were to go buy this hub right now, assuming you could you could buy any bike parts right now, they would be pre-greased. So you probably wouldn't have to do this. They it's just be... that we have early ones. And they would be pre-greased, yeah. but over time that grease, like you have to re-grease hubs. Yeah. So this one happens to be an older one that was never greased, but we've had to re-grease some of our newer ones because we put a lot of time on our bikes. What awesome. you're gonna do is pull off that plastic thing again. Oh yeah. And then you're gonna use this premium grease and you basically just want to put it like in each of those holes all the way around. How much? I put a decent bit, yeah. like you don't want to flood it. It's not moving at all. Okay, the hardest part of this is squeezing the grease. <laughs> don't lubricate, it says. Yeah, so the bottom says don't lubricate. Basically, you're not supposed to lubricate inside the yeah. hub. So don't go nuts here, basically. Yeah. Just literally just on the outside. Do what you're told. Jacob actually specifically pointed out to me. He was like, yeah, you want to lube this outside part. You do not want to lube the inside. Now just rub it all the way around. But not inside. Not That's inside. okay if it gets on the top, I assume. Yeah. We are all greased. Is there anything else to do or do we just put it back together at this point? Basically, just put it back together. Just make sure, once again, that you have not greased down there. So now you're gonna put the teeth back on. I can put it down because it I don't down. have grease on the bottom. Yep. Okay. And then you need to spin the teeth so that they're like, or the, that plastic piece so that they're under the teeth. Does that make sense? Um, yes, but yes, makes sense. Hold on, like that. The other direction. Because right now it's mm. pushed forward against the teeth. You want it to be like, underneath the teeth. There you go. Okay. You have to have it all the way under yeah, because that's how it fits in the wheel. Here is the wheel. We're gonna do this, try to do this on the bench this time. There are two springs in there. They go ahead and pull indeed. them out. Oh. So you can okay. see, cause sometimes they'll come out with the. Okay, big so, spring, little spring. Big spring, little spring. The big spring goes around the outside. In the wheel there, there's an outer ring. Do you see the outer ring? Yes. It goes outside of that outer ring. Cool. 
which it should automatically yes, just drop into place does. there. And then this one's gonna go inside. Yes, yes, but look at it. Do you see at the bottom how there's a weird little spot? That, yeah, the thing you're pulling mm -hmm. on. Yes, this little hook. That little hook has a hole that it goes in, yep. So if I hadn't taken these out though, I could have just let them be. Well, you have to double check that the inner one is inside its Very hole. Very cool. Because okay. if it's not, then it you will not work. Problems, yeah. So it should look like that. This is what I find the hardest part. Okay, that I'm ready. That goes back in, but it will only fit like one way and you need to make sure the plastic doesn't. thing doesn't get pushed up. Aha, uh -huh. okay. That's I why you're trying to hook it be. under the teeth is because then it's more likely to actually fit. So it doesn't go in any particular. No, the rotation it. does not matter. Okay, so we're just gonna, that's not it. So you're gonna, yeah, there you go. Oh okay. yeah, I see the see? problem. There you go. Okay, Essentially, if it fits, then you've done it right. Do not force, as usual. I feel like that's kind of a good rule for like most bike dance and maintenance things. I'm gonna add this to our tenants of the channel. Don't put shit on the ground. Don't force shit. So now you want to put that seal back this in. Guy. Nope, the other guy. It's underneath the weed, the tire there. I think I have kind of a bad habit of taking things apart. Like when I take things apart, I don't always pay attention to how they went together. I'm so focused on getting it apart that if you weren't here to say, oh, that goes first, I'd be like, I have no recollection. Of pulling that out. Yeah, so it kind of came with the whole hub when you did it. Oh, right, we pulled it off the yeah. hub. That's why I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay. There's actually a specific tool that they make for putting that seal back in. Let me guess, we don't have it. We don't have it. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter as long as the seal is all the way in. So go ahead sure. and put it on and you'll see it wants to sit on top. So you have to kind of push it, there you go. There's space around the edge that that lock ring locks into. This seal has to be below that point so the lock ring can actually fit. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the side you want up. Show with the difference of the two sides. Yeah. Black Can't thing really... covers silver thing. Yep. Silver thing stick out, that goes up. Okay, so, uh -huh, I see this is one of those. Start with that side because you can squeeze the other part together. There we yeah. go. Okay, yep, cool. So if you look on the inside of that, there are some flat spots and less flat spots. It will only fit a couple different ways. So yeah. if you push it on and it doesn't go on. If you put it like this and then you turn it yes. and it drops down and once it drops down, then you push. Then you're good to go. When you're putting a cassette back on, generally we rec recommend wiping down the free hub body, putting a little bit of grease on it because that also helps decrease the likelihood of creaking, and then you're good to go. But you do not need the premium grease for this. Correct, just traditional grease. So, let me grease, grease, grease. I like grease. <laughs> Mac is usually like, what on earth you're putting so much grease? Generally, I do say that, yes. Ah, we did it. There we go. And then we're gonna put the hat back on. And this is how to fix a creaky Shimano 12 speed hub in one minute. Start by removing your wheel and cassette, and carefully remove the end cap with a pair of pliers or cone wrench. Then using either snap ring pliers or two small tools like a pokey tool and small screwdriver, remove the lock ring that holds the free hub body in place. Now pull straight up to remove the entire free hub body, pull off the seal and plastic ring. Now grease the teeth with Shimano Premium Grease, making sure not to get any grease on the bottom of the free hub body. Reinstall the plastic ring and rotate it so the legs of the plastic ring sit inside the teeth of the free hub body. Now confirm that both springs are seated correctly in the wheel, then carefully push the free hub body back into place. If the plastic ring gets pushed up, carefully rotate it so it drops into place. Reinstall the seal, making sure it is pushed all the way into the wheel to provide room for the lock ring. Insert the lock ring starting on the opposite side from the side that squeezes together. Reinstall your cassette and put your wheel back on your bike and you're ready to ride creek free. Mm -hmm.